me just start that one. Ah, here we go. So I'm going to start streaming. Here we go. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another Friday show. So we're just about to start. And we've got Carla Bloom again. And it, she's got a very interesting topic. It's all about feathers, all feathers particularly. And um, it's very exciting for those of you who don't know me. I'm Christian Zasse, Zasse Photo. I run uh, educational channel here on Raptors. And I'll be with you shortly. So just in about, let me see, I don't even know. It just should be just a few seconds away. That's right. Okay, see you shortly. By the way, I'll quickly greet some of you here also on, on Facebook whilst we are we're at it. I see Meadow, Glenn Hazel Woody, nice to see you. Tech, uh, Teach Con, that's nice. Baffle 91, Sasha, Nicole, nice, nice that you've made it. Very good. Bosco's Doghouse, what a name. Pacific Northwest, Kate, wonderful to have you here. Proud Cat Mama of Free, I learned that one. That's good. And let's see who else is there. Oh gosh, Merzel Dotes, I hope I get that correct. Osprey Mama, of course, <laughs> is there. Very nice. And let me just jump quickly to uh, see who is on on um, on Facebook. We've got Brenda Candens, I hope I pronounced it, David Edward, and a few others, and I can't see all of you. But anyway, we're going to start in a second now. Just get the camera live and see where we are. Make sure everything's fine here. Okay, there we go. Okay, hi everyone. This is yeah. Okay, well, let's start. Let's start that one too. Yeah, I nearly forgot. Hi everyone. This is uh, Christian and Rebecca, Rebecca again. <laughs> so it's wonderful to have Rebecca, and Rebecca has prepared herself very well for this show. It's going to be very exciting. We've got Carla Bloom here again, so we're really looking forward to this. Uh, it's going to be all about feathers. A great, great subject, as you know. As a photographer, I really love feathers, and uh, whilst. Uh, Carla and Rebecca are going to talk about feathers. Prepare your questions, please. They're very important to us. Uh, we're going to bring them in. It's going to be about 10 minutes, uh, some, some talk, so you, you, you get a bit of a background, uh, on, 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 especially on owl feathers, which are so fascinating. And then we're going to show you something about feather structures, some of them you've seen in the background. We're going to learn a lot about feathers, so bring in your questions. They're really important. And I'll also show you some beautiful slow motion videos. Anyway, so let's bring him. Hi, Rebecca. So <laughs> say hello to Rebecca. And uh, let's just bring in Carla. I hope she is ready. Let's just try this. I'm going to bring in. Very good. Hi, Carla. How are you again? I'm ready to go. You're ready to go. You look so fresh. So you are, of course, in Houston, but it's Minnesota. I always have to think Houston, Minnesota. That's a very small place. We've had you April last year, and it was a incredibly interesting. Um, so maybe you could briefly just let our uh, let our viewers know again, for those of you who don't know you, uh, just a little bit about the International Owl Center, what you do, and particularly what the subject is going to be about today. Thank you. Okay, at the International Owl Center, our focus is educating people about owls. Uh, so we don't do rehab. We do a little bit of research, mostly on great horned owl vocalizations and a few other associated things, but mostly focused on owl education with our goal of not just saying, hey, aren't owls cool, but take it to the next step to say, what can you do to help owls? Because humans are the biggest problem for owls both in the United States and around the world. And generally, we don't know how we're impacting them. So our goal is to educate people um, to live owl-friendly lives. And most people, once they learn what they can do, most people are willing to make at least one change in their life that's going to benefit owls. So that's kind of our focus at the Owl Center. Yeah, very important work. Um, and education is always like a super important thing for getting people on board. Um, so we're talking today all about owl feathers and owl feather structure, the different types of feathers and what they're used for. Uh, so maybe you, did you want to start out with uh, maybe the different types of feathers or? Uh, Should we start with this? Yeah, that one's a good one. 
Uh, so, uh, Carla's showing us four different feathers from different birds. And we were going to get you guys to guess which one is the owl feather. There you go. That's the question. So, which one is the owl feather? So, we're going to... Uh, we're going to... We're going to... I'm just going to blend us in here, too, so you can see us <laughs> on the, on the right-hand corner. So, the question here is, you see four feathers. Which one is the owl feather? Does anybody know? So, put your guesses in, please. So, we're going to wait a little bit um, and see what you say. <laughs> and if anybody... Uh, and if anybody, so is it number one, two, three, or four? We're going to wait a little bit and see see what you come up with. <laughs> so, mares, what it, can you read that? Mares and does? Mares and does? Yes, it says have... number one. Okay, we'll just get a few in. Uh, Amanda says number one. Okay, we're still taking some, 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 more, some more in. Let's see. Bosco says all of them. Oh, Glenn Hazelwood, he clearly says, hello, my friends, number three. And then Miss 9690 says, hi, everyone, number one. Ducky says three. Patty says one. Bethel says one. Let's jump to Facebook quickly and see what we got there. Okay. Susan says one. Donna says three. David says one. Okay. Looks like a tie between one and, and, and three. And Sue says four even. Okay, so we got a lot of, we got a, so what do you think, where, um, where's the, where are the most votes for? <laughs> it looks like a lot for number one, and maybe second is number three, and then a lot of people think all of them are owl feathers. <laughs> right, so how are we going to resolve it? Do you want to start something, saying something, Rebecca, or do you want to, Carla, do you Let's want to? Let's let Carla explain. Carla, you go ahead. <laughs> okay, well, first off, they are not all owl feathers. And very often, number one gets the most votes because ah. it's big. Everybody thinks owls are big. But you have to remember that something like an elf owl is literally five inches tall. The whole entire owl is. So none of their feathers are going to be big. They're all going to be really, really small. So big doesn't have anything to do with what kind of feather it is. Um, so it actually is not number one. Anybody know what number one is? Anybody know what number one is? I'm going to let you uh, ponder about that. And then let's, let's talk a little bit more about number three. Why is it number three? <laughs> it is number three. Now, let me get you a little bit closer. I don't know if it's going to focus really good. So That's there's okay. three ways that you can tell that that one. Let me try. I do it this way. Yeah, Put that's better. That's much better. That's much better. Yes. Okay. Per yeah. Mm -hmm. So the leading edge of that feather has a comb on it, the serration, and that you're only going to find on the outer primary of an owl wing, and that changes airflow to make it, the airflow more quietly over the wing. And if you look at the trailing edge of the feather, over on this side, this is backwards for me, so I'm not used to doing this. The back side of the feather back here is also ragged, and that changes the airflow also to help it flow more quietly over the feather. And if you could touch these, and I'm sure I can't get close enough that you can tell, but it's got a velvety pile to it. None of the other feathers have a velvety pile on the top surface of the feather. And that's something that owl feathers have. Very few other birds have that. I think some of the night jars do. Um, but those are the three things that make that an owl feather and the other ones not. Excellent. Very well explained. So we're going to go more detail, but there are some, there, there's some uh, um, guesses now about feather number one. Do you want to read some off, Rebecca? Uh, so Merzidote says eagle. Janny Bop says turkey. Yes. Uh, yeah, quite okay, a few for There you go. Yeah. That's a solution. Let's look. Let's quickly look. Take a look at Facebook and see what they're saying. Someone here on on uh, Periscope is saying it's a badger. That I can see there. <laughs> That's a good one. Um, so let's see what do we have on Facebook. Um, number one is eagle. Says Brenda. Uh, Bev says it's a hawk. Donna thinks it's an eagle. Well, the answer you just heard. So. What, 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 what is so special about number one, the turkey feather? Well, it's very big and they're very commonly found. So that's why I like to include that one in there. 
there, at least where we are, and in much of the United States, there are lots of wild turkeys. And they have very large feathers, um, very brown with very um, fine white barring on them. Some of their feathers actually have iridescence on them. They're very beautiful and very commonly encountered, but that is a turkey feather and they're big, so they're easy to find. Okay, so we've identified two out of four now. So shall we take the next guess what number two is? <laughs> Yeah, shall we go? So I'm going to hand it over again to all of you on Periscope. Let's let's see who's on Periscope. Um, let's give the people on Periscope a chance now and see what they're going to say. So uh, what is feather number two for you? I can see kids on Periscope. Let's, let's see. So we've got to wait for you. <laughs> give give, give uh, people there a chance to take a guess. <laughs> okay. Red tail hawk says queen... What is it? Queen? Queen Notifa. Yeah, Queen Notifa says it's a red-tailed hawk number two. Susan North says a hawk. Yeah, Susan North is also says a hawk. That's great. So these are from Periscope now. That's a great, uh, I guess so. We've got some smart people on Periscope. Smart, you smart people on Periscope. Do you hear that? That's great. <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> Alice Sikora, nice to see you. Number two is a duck. So we've got the red-tailed hawk, we've got a hawk or a duck. So that's the question. So anybody else on Periscope for that guess? <laughs> any, more, any, any more? Kit, come on. Don't hide. <laughs> you can't hide on Periscope from me. <laughs> YouTube has a few guesses Yeah. red-tailed hawk also. <laughs> Let's see who else is going to take a guess. Okay, let's see. Can you can you have a look and see what YouTube says uh, on number two? Do are they take? Yeah, a, quite a few for red tail. For quite a look on red, uh, quite a few on red tail. Let's take a look quickly at um, at chicken. Fa Facebook chicken. <laughs> okay, Facebook's Bev chicken hawk. Yeah, Liz says a hawk. Robin. Somebody on. Periscope oh, Robin. Says that's got to be a huge Robin. You know, <laughs> <laughs> that's probably a mutated Robin. <laughs> There's the size of my hand. For <laughs> Hi, Eric, uh, Naturescope, I can just see these. He'll know these things. Okay, so is that a huge robin? Okay, so what is the answer, Carla? Tell us. <laughs> it is red-tailed hawk. Very good. For those so of you... So needless many... to say, it is a red tail feather from a red-tailed hawk. There you go. There you go. So very well done, mostly on Periscope this time. So that was a great guess. So that leads us with number four. So this is a difficult one. What is feather number four? So I'm going to open it to Periscope, um, YouTube, and so on. <laughs> and let you take the guess. What is feather number four? Let's see who comes first. And I'm going to wait a little bit till, yeah, let's see whatever comes. So it's for number four, please. This is a tough one. That's a tough one. It's a tough yeah. one. I think Rebecca got three out of four, right? Oh, here Ooh, we go. Here we go. Grateful Dad says. Ruffed grouse. Ruffed grouse. No, we don't say anything yet. Don't say anything yet. Let's get some more guesses. <laughs> Shake your tail feathers. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> some more. Let's see what... Um, let's jump to... Uh, so feather number four. Any guesses on Facebook? Is there anything on... Nobody daring here to say anything on no, and nobody is saying anything on Periscope. Any guesses? This is fun. Um, oh, for feather number four. Come on, some more guesses. Oops, that's okay. Oh, we got that one. It's a toughie. It's a toughie. Yes, it is. It is. Okay. Uh, we have Queen Otifa with hen grouse and mm -hmm. thrice upon a time with woodpecker. DJ Cripple, A.K. Eric. Blue Jay. Um, Mom of Nikolai Mary says Barred Owl. I think that's a lot of guesses. That's a lot. That's a lot. Okay. So let's see what's going on. Can you take a look at YouTube? Uh, YouTube says, per JC says Peregrine Falcon. Uh, Carol Hogan says Kestrel. Cooper Hawk. Cooper's Hawk. I can see that. Oh, yeah. Cooper's Hawk. Barred Owl. Barred Owl. Night Hawk. Or a Pheasant. Buzzard is somebody here on Buzzard. Periscope. Okay, let's look let's uh, let, and let's have a quick look and see what what is what are our friends here saying. If I can just one second, here we go. And another guess on Facebook from Annie for Kestrel. Yep, 
Kestrel, okay. Yeah. So we got, this is a difficult one. Obviously, it's a very widespread of guesses here. But there was one person who got it right, I think. Yeah, rough grouse. <laughs> there we go. So that was very good, the rough grouse. So yeah, it's and, a tail feather from a rough a, grouse. And, 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 and tell us a little bit about that feather because it looks so different. <laughs> yeah, well, so it's a tail feather. So it's mm -hmm. going to be more squared on the end. Um, and rough grouse can have either reddish tail feathers or grayish tail feathers. Um, but that the dark and light, whoops, on the other side, dark and light terminal bands, I can see why somebody would say kestrel, because a male mm -hmm. kestrel, of course, has um, the noticeable bands on the bottom. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so that is a ruffed grouse. I didn't say what, what kind of owl feather that was, though, did I? I just said it was an owl feather. Okay, so let's open that again. So that's number three, okay? So yeah, just lift a little bit higher so they can see it, yeah. So the question now, we know number three is an owl feather. So the question now is a difficult one. Specific, which owl are we talking about? Okay, so I'll open it here to, we got um, Periscope and we got uh, YouTube and Facebook. So who's going to be the first one to identify which uh, number three is and what type of owl feather from which uh, specifically from which type of owl this is. So we're all open. Let me just jump back here and see. So let's start and look at here. Read out uh, Rebecca. Uh, Bosco's doghouse says barred owl, MLS 9690 spotted eagle owl. I didn't know that was, a, that yeah. sounds like two different yeah, types. South Af in Africa, yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's cool. Learn something new. Yeah, that's what we always <laughs> learn. You always learn. Uh, another guest for Barred Owl from Pacific Northwest Kate, ba Barn Owl from yes. Mac Lady, uh, Mom of Nikolai Mary says ba Barred Owl. Barred Owl, that's on Periscope. Barn Owl is another one here, Great Horned, or from, mm -hmm. from Eric Nature. Scoper, and then let's have a look at, oh, now we're going to jump to, this is fun, oops, <laughs> it's gone again. I, I don't know what I've done. One sec, my Facebook friends, just hang on. I'm just linking back onto your page and to see what you have to say. One second, let's just, we lost you for a second. Okay, here we go. Uh, great horned owl, long eared owl, barred owl, lots of, lots of different owls yes. people are guessing. Bev says barred, Susan says long eared, Grace says, okay, Liz says barred. Oh, you got a widespread again, very yep. widespread. But the right answer was in there a few times. I believe it was. <laughs> okay, anybody else? Oh, there's a turkey. No, no, no that's probably, I don't know. That can't be, that you're probably nice. talking to someone else. Nature yeah. is talking to someone <laughs> So, Carla, can you reveal the secret? What is it? The official answer is barred owl. So all two of you who said barred owl, is there anybody of you who got all four correct? Just be honest. Is there anybody who got, I'm just curious. I mean, Rebecca, I, I would have never done this, okay? But Rebecca got three out of four correct. That's remarkable. I would have maybe got one correct at most, right? So is there anybody who got four correct? I really would like to know. Anybody who said, I knew all four, I would just like to hear of you because that is brilliant uh, if you manage it. Just be honest. And if there's anybody who said, I know all, all four feathers, uh, that would be fantastic. I did, who is I did? Thrace upon a time on Periscope. Okay. Okay. Well, good for you. Good for you. No, if you knew them one. all, that's great. How about all, all, four wrong. all four wrong? Yes, you can get all four wrong. You could. <laughs> could be a dog feather, whatever. <laughs> you know, that's fine. <laughs> but that's, that's incredible. Let's just look at... F so on YouTube, I don't see anybody who says they got all four correct. On Facebook, is there anybody who says, no, there's just someone who says, not me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is wonderful. This is wonderful. I knew one. Good for you. No, I mean, one is fine. One is you know, it's better than none, right? Mm -hmm. um, but, but if you didn't get any, that's still okay. Too. Yeah, that's still okay. Oh, My yeah. goodness, this is, this is difficult, right? This is difficult stuff. I'm just looking at our notes here. Yeah, thanks, Jenny, and, and uh, for putting all the notes in. I can see that. So that we're fine. Okay, well, anyway, thank you very much. So that, that's, that's a very interesting spot. Let's jump straight in. Okay, Rebecca, I'm going to hand it over yeah. to you now. Uh, I was thinking maybe if you could pull that thing with the feathers back up again. Uh, you mentioned that the barred owl feather, number three, was a primary feather. And mm -hmm. I think 
uh, you mentioned that the red-tailed hawk, that was a tail feather? Or yep. maybe you could explain to us uh, how you can tell the difference between a tail feather and a, and a primary flight feather. Um, a tail feather, well, let me show you some tail feathers, other ones. There's a barred owl tail. Um, so especially when you get the central ones, the vein is the same width on both sides, the, the webbing on the sides of that shaft. Um, so your central ones will be like that. Even the, I mean, it's a little more offset when you get to the, this is the outer tail feather. So you can see it's smaller there, but they're fairly square on the bottom. Um, there's a little bit of a, a tip to them, but they're much more square. Um, and if you can see the whole shaft, which you can, I guess, on this one, if you look at the base, there's kind of a, a curve to it, but it's uh, the curve is right at the bottom, like right where the, the shaft starts. These may have a curve to them, um, but it's kind of more of a general thing. A tail one, especially when you get to the outer tail feathers, it really curves. Um, let me find... I've got bags of feathers all over the place. Just a quick thank you to Glenn Hazelwoody for your donation. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> oh, wow. So here's a, a central tail feather. Let me do this. So it focuses a little bit better from a great horned owl. And you see how it's kind of squarish? And then we do uh, pick a wing feather so you can kind of see a difference. Oh, yeah, you can definitely see the curve in that one. Yeah, but it's a curve that is consistent throughout the shaft. And now I need to find you an outer tail feather. So give wow. me just a second. I will get you an outer tail feather. Here's an outer tail feather. Mm -hmm. But almost all that curve is right at the bottom. Oh, really? And then it straightens up. I see that, yeah. You see the difference? So that one's the tail, and the previous one with the curve through the whole thing was the flight feather? It was from, it was a secondary or so. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the tail feathers, their curvature is going to be right at the base, and the wing feathers will be more consistent all the way through. By the, and way, they you, don't, by the way, you're hearing an owl in the background that is not uh, synthetic, that is a real owl. <laughs> That's Alice saying hi to everybody. <laughs> Actually, she's not really saying hi. She's saying, who on earth are you talking to in my house? <laughs> uh, so we so had somebody, those... Amanda said, wow, it's huge when you held up one of the feathers. Uh, we were just wondering maybe what's the largest feather you've ever seen? Mm -hmm. mm, of any species or an owl? Both. Like, How's Here's that? <laughs> A vulture feather is pretty big. Oh, my goodness. So wow. so here you go. That's a vulture feather. Now we're going to put the question open again. What type of vulture is it? Can I ask that? <laughs> well, if you know where I am, there's not a whole lot of options. <laughs> okay. Well, that, let's see. Let's see. Uh, okay. Let's see. Let's see what... Uh, um, let's ask the Periscope people. Come on. What type of vulture is this? In North America, there is one major vulture. <laughs> and for comparison, this is oh, wow. Eurasian, Eurasian eagle owl. Wow, primary. beautiful, beautiful. <laughs> okay, let's see. Let's see the votes here for the vulture first. Okay, we're waiting. Here we go. Let's see. Still looking on, and see nobody on Facebook voting. Turkey vulture, I see Cherie. Very nice. Turkey, no, that's all going here. <laughs> Pacific North says Black Vulture, Turkey Vulture, Mark Horner, very nice. What is that, Bosco? I can't read that. Bosco's do dog, dog house. house, yes. A tur on Nature Scoper, of course, is voting for Turkey Vulture. That's fine. 
and let's see if there's anybody on on facebook yes alan is saying turkey vulture how is that the may most of the votes are for turkey vulture right <laughs> okay yeah. i wasn't too that's the only vulture we get here that's the only okay i didn't know that okay right but the biggest feather i have ever seen is a feather from an andean condor and oh, it was i thought it was a condor oh my goodness it was, it was at least that big it was gigantic so that's of course one of the primary feathers right or yeah yeah, yeah. i was in argentina and we were visiting an andean condor roost and somebody had picked up this molted feather and they were leaving and they said, here, do you want this feather? And my husband said, sure. And I said, oh, my goodness. I cannot legally bring this back into the United States. And I can't plead ignorance either. So we had to leave it. There. Oh, oh, no. That, that's, it. that's interesting. You know, let's, let's just talk a little bit about the feather laws because it's very interesting. You know, what are you? Oh, sorry, just. Sorry, that's okay. We just put put this all by mistake. Just one second. This is typically on a live show. We just there we go. It's okay. Um, so, Carla, what what are the laws in in the United States about holding different feathers? Because you're showing all these feathers. Can anybody do this in the states? What you're doing there? No. 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 <laughs> education facilities can get permits to use feathers for education. Mm -hmm. Researchers can get them for salvage. But that's pretty much it. A private citizen cannot keep feathers from any native owl, uh, bird species. So that right. includes almost that's house or um, pigeon. Oh, those are the ones you can have. You can have house sparrows, pigeons, and starling feathers, or non-native things like chucker, partridge, and things like that. Um, but robins, blue jays, cardinals, chickadees, you cannot legally have their feathers. Really. Yeah. Do you know so how we have Canada to have permits for all these feathers. Yeah, it's the same in Canada. Christian was just asking mm -hmm. if I knew. Um, and the way I understood it is because you can't mm -hmm. prove whether you found it on a dead bird or if you took it from a living bird. So mm -hmm. that's why it's not allowed. Yeah. So when they passed the Migratory Bird Treaty Act back mm -hmm. in the early 1900s, you had all the women at that time who were wearing hats with big feathers or whole dead birds on them. And that was the fashion. So some of the bird species were almost getting wiped out because they had beautiful feathers. So when they protected birds, they had to protect the feathers also because there's no way to say this feather was naturally molted or it was plucked from a bird that was killed. You you can't you can't tell. So they have to protect the feathers as well as the birds. Right, but chicken feathers are legal, right? <laughs> Okay. Totally legal. So if you go into a <laughs> shop, you usually get chicken feathers or not poultry feathers. That's usually what you get in the craft stores. And some ah. people do a very good job painting them like native feathers. And and what about? I'm just curious about synthetic feathers nowadays. Uh, you know, do they sell them too, or do they make synthetic feathers so people get an eagle feather but it's synthetic, or an owl feather that's synthetic? Synthetic? Does that exist? Never exists. Okay, I was just curious. <laughs> um, we had a question from Alice Sikora on Periscope, and she's wondering how you get feathers in your collection. Oh, that's a good one. Uh, so some of them are found, um, and I have all kinds of, you're going to see whole wings, things like this. So this is from dead birds that are found and turned into us. Um, but... <laughs> Most of the bags and bags and bags of feathers I have here are molted from our own captive birds. Wow. Okay, and let's let's get right into it. This is what what interests me so much. Why does an owl fly so silently? I mean, why is that even possible? <laughs> okay. Here we go. There's three things, and we're going to use a big feather for starters. Let me okay. see if. This will work. So this is a feather from Uhu, the Eurasian eagle owl. Wow. Yeah, we can see it. It's, it's ah, in focus. there we go. Yeah, it's in focus now. It's beautiful. Right. Mm -hmm. You see that serration on the leading edge? Yes. It's a comb that changes the airflow um, that makes it flow more quietly over the leading edge of the wing. Now, not all the feathers have that. It's only the leading edge of the wing. So if I show you... A great gray owl wing. And great gray owls depend heavily on hearing for hunting. 
me see if this will focus properly. Yes. Can you see that? Oh, very, very well. Uh, very right. substantial comb. Mm -hmm. Yep. And that's only at the, the leading edge of the wing. So it's the P10, the outer primary. P9 has a little bit. And then nothing on the other feathers. They don't have that. So this is the leading edge of the wing as the owl's flying. That's where you're going to find that comb. Now on the trailing edge of the feather, we'll go back to Uhu's feather here. Can you see how the trailing edge is also very ragged? Yep. That changes the airflow also to make it more quiet as the air comes together on the back side of the feathers. And most of their feathers do have that ragged trailing edge and that helps keep them more quiet also. Mm -hmm. um, now the other thing, I don't know that I can show you because it's very small. Um, I don't know if you look very, very close at these feathers. Can you see that there's kind of a, a softness to them, kind of a velvety pile? Uh, the, yeah. I can see the, it if you move the wing up a little bit there. Yeah, I can see it kind of fuzzy at the bottom. Yeah, yeah. Or are those the down feathers? Um, these are down feathers. Mm -hmm. Those are down feathers, okay. right. If you could touch these, it'd be really easy to tell because the top surface of owl feathers, not the bottom surface, the top surface feels like velvet. Wow. It's velvety pile on the top side. Um, other bird feathers don't feel like that. So at the Owl Center, we have wings that people can touch because it's so dramatic. It's like touching a nylon jacket versus velvet. And this, the penula, that's the velvety pile on the top surface, mm -hmm. That keeps it quiet as those feathers move across each other as the, the feathers are moving and the wings are moving. Just like wearing a fleece jacket is far more quiet than wearing a nylon jacket. So those are the three things together that helps owls be quiet as they fly. So it's the, the comb on the leading edge of the wing. It's the ragged edge on the back side of the feather. And it's that... Maybe you can see it there. Mm -hmm. Not really. Can you see it's a little bit velvety? Yeah, I can see it there. Yeah. So those are the things that keep owls quiet when they fly. Now, we always think of owls having silent flight. Not all owls do. Ah, uh, here we go. Okay. This is the fun part of being an owl center because we can get into all the exceptions. So, so shall we ask that question? Let's really, can, can I involve our audience a little bit and ask them mm -hmm. which owls are silent? And let's start with a question first. I mean, you say, Carla, I would like to ask the question here, which owls are silent? Shall we start with, 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 uh, start with that question first? Sure. Yeah, so I'm just going to throw this at our audience. By the way, thank you, Nicole. I just want to say quickly, thank you, Nicole, for bringing Carla back on the show. This is really brilliant. Wonderful. So, uh, yeah. So the question is, which owls, name, name one owl that is silent, and then we're going to get to the noisy owls afterwards. Okay. <laughs> so let's just see. Okay, let's see. Um, let's look on Facebook. Or do you, or do you want, uh, of course, Periscope. Okay. Periscope is no one so far. So just um, tell us which is a silent owl in, in flight. Um, let's see, go back to YouTube here. Anybody, anybody guessing here? This is not an easy one. Mm -mm. It's not an easy one. Which one is uh, a very... Okay, here we go. Yeah, we've got a guest from Bosco's Doghouse for Screech Owl, Merzidotes for Great Horned Owl, Great Horned Owl from... MLS 9690 and Meadow, Great Grey Owls, well, that's obvious, mm -hmm. we just said that. <laughs> um, Mary Williams for Snowy Owl. Oh, wow. Uh, Barn Owl, Barred Owl. And anything here on, let's see, I'm um, just trying to see what we have on, let's take a look here at Facebook. Okay. Uh, no, Screech Owl, I see from Annie. And Condense, is that right? Screech, also Screech Owl. So, a lot of, about Screech Owls on Facebook. <laughs> uh, what do you think? Uh, what do you, what's your comments to that, Carla? <laughs> um, well, it's a continuum. 
So oh. anybody that watched our great horned owl cam, if you watch them fly, you can hear. Mm. Even if you don't see them, you can hear them flapping. Um, gliding, not necessarily. So flapping is a lot louder than gliding is for any owl species. Sure. Um, sure. Some people have probably seen the film Owl Power, where they show the microphone set up, and they have a peregrine falcon that flies over, and a pigeon that flies over, and then a oh. barn owl that flies over. And they show the barn owl flapping, not making any noise at all. And they are one of the quietest flying owls. Now, we have a captive barn owl, and sometimes if you have really good ears, you can hear it a little bit when Isn't she's flapping. Isn't that flat. amazing? Isn't that amazing? But you can tell um, an owl species how much they use hearing for hunting and how quiet they are based on that comb on the leading edge of their wing. So I have a bunch of a bunch of these, and you saw the great gray. Mm -hmm. Can you see that? Yes. That's that's a really dramatically big comb. It's very big. Um, so they de depend heavily on hearing for hunting and they're very quiet now here's a snowy owl ah right snowy owl was also mentioned yes yeah mm -hmm. not much of a comb there mm -hmm. you can see that it's there but it's very small so not as silent of a flyer but maybe it's also the snow that does some dampening there right or uh, possibly but they're more visual hunters oh okay um here's a great horned owl so they have they have a decent comb. Mm -hmm. Here's a barred owl. Wow. They have a reasonable comb on their feathers also. Um, Gee, you have a lot of, what a collection. It's incredible. It's very impressive. <laughs> Greech owls. We talked about. They have a comb. Um... But it's not substantial. But for their size, it's decent. But they're small. I have a sawwet owl. Wow. Can you see that? For its yes. size, it's pretty good for its size. And last but not least, I have a hawk owl. A hawk owl? Which has virtually no comb at all. Yeah. Okay, okay. They're not acoustic hunters. Right. So it's there, but it's just more vestigial than anything. You can just kind of see that, oh, there kind of is a comb, but not substantially. So huge variation in owls. And then if you get into Africa and Asia and you get into fish owls, if you hunt first fish for a living, they don't hear you and you don't hear the fish. So they've lost most of the adaptations for silent flight. They don't have the penula, that velvety pile on the top surface. They have virtually non-existent combs on the edges of their feathers. Um, they're more like hawk feathers and they don't have much of a facial disc at all. They, they, yeah, they're very different than most owls because of what they're eating. So they don't need that stuff, so they don't have it. Right. And so just to make that clear for uh, the people watching is the owls will have silent flight, not just to, to hide themselves from their prey, but also so that they're not making noise that interferes with what the owl is hearing. That's right. Well, there's actually research being done on that. If, if it's about prey hearing them or about them making noise so they can't hear the prey. And there's <coughs> evidence that suggests it's both. Oh, so okay. it's... It's not a hundred percent done deal, but there's evidence that suggests both. So the thing with owls is there's a ton that we don't know. Um, and a lot of statements that have just become common knowledge that aren't actually true <laughs> or things that somebody said once and everybody just continues. And it's like, where's the data that actually supports that? Um, so, yeah, so we can say probably, yes, it's because of, their prey hearing them and them needing to not make sound so they can still hear their prey. Probably both. Yeah, I do remember last time you, you were talking about the myth of the 270 degree turn of an owl. I remember that very yeah. well. So that's one of these things that everybody believes. <laughs> and you said, I remember you saying you've never 
seen this actually happening. You don't know anybody who has witnessed a, an owl turning to set, uh, its head three quarters of a way around. You know, so. Not in the wild. <laughs> not, um, oh, not in the wild. Okay. A couple of educators have had birds that would fixate on something and they could get them um, to turn their heads. And I think it was a barn owl and a long-eared owl, if I remember oh, right. Uh, so you've told us a little bit about this, uh, what makes the owl silent, but uh, maybe we could talk a little bit about the structure of the feather, like what are feathers made of and how are they put together? Yeah, may, do you, Carla, do you want me to show some of the pictures of the feathers? Sure. Uh, because let me just, one second, let me just do that and then uh, get some of the, here we go. Okay. So that feather is a rictal bristle. So the, this is from Alice, the owl you hear hooting upstairs. Right, okay. <laughs> so these are the feathers right around her bill that are tactile. Um, so feathers have that central shaft, um, the rachis, and then they have barbs that come out on the sides. And this one doesn't have the barbules that would come off the sides of the barbs. And the barbules usually have hooks, and that's what zips the feathers together. But many of the feathers right on the face of an owl don't have the barbules and the hooks. So they have more of an open construction like this. They don't zip together like you think of a feather zipping together. Um, and this is allowing sound to pass through the feather. And these have a very stiff shaft. Um, and wow. they're used just like mouse whiskers are. They're for sensing touch because owls are very farsighted. They don't see up well close, well up close. So if they're looking, they want to look at their food that they're standing on, they will actually stretch up as tall as they can to look down at their food. It's like holding your arms out to read the newspaper if you're farsighted. So when they're eating, if you watch an owl when it's eating, usually it will close its eyes and it's feeling using its rictal bristles. And if a mother is feeding its babies little tiny bits of food, usually their eyes are closed and they're feeling with their rictal bristles. Okay, do you want to, you've got some oh. questions there. Oh, okay. So we have some questions here uh, that our, our moderators have just put together for us. Um, yeah, say again which that first one, Bev. Uh, oh, from yeah, Bev. Yeah, th this one here. Let's go there. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. So Bev Webb, uh, mm -hmm. say again what is the biggest owl and the smallest? Okay, smallest. There's no argument. That's the elf owl, um, and they're just over five inches tall, fully grown. They're teeny tiny. They they look like a sparrow. They're little brownish gray jobbies and they're really not much bigger than a sparrow. So everybody agrees on that. We have those in the Southwestern US. That's where they occur in the world. The largest owl, there's a lot of debate on. So sometimes great gray gets thrown in there because they're the tallest, but that's from the bottom of the tail to the top of the head um, because they just have huge feathers. There's not much bird underneath. It's like having really big hair. Does that make you bigger just because you have big hair? <laughs> okay. Uh, People usually don't include the great gray, but if you include just overall tip of the tail to the top of the head, they'd be in the running. So the two um, that are in the running, most of the books you read are going to say Eurasian Eagle Owl, uh, mm -hmm. like Uhu, like the, the feather that I was showing you. Well, here, I'll show you a different one. This is an undertail covert from her. Huge. Our screech owl is only this big compared to the feather. Um, so they're really, really big birds. The biggest bird ever measured for weight and for wingspan was a Eurasian eagle owl. Okay. Now, Eurasian eagle owls have a broad range over Europe and Asia. And the only ones that are really big, I mean, they're, they're all really big, but the ones that are huge, the only ones in the running for the biggest owl in the world are the ones in the far north and typically the Siberian subspecies. So if you include all subspecies as a whole, they're not all big. There's just certain ones that are really, really big. And then the one that we consider the largest species is the Blackiston's fish owl, which occurs in Hokkaido in northern Japan and the Russian Far East. But all of them are huge. They're very rare. 
they're not that well studied. So of course, there's going to be far fewer individuals that have ever been measured to be able to say how heavy they are or what their wingspan is. So we consider the Blackistons fish owl the biggest just because as a whole, they're all huge. And the Eurasian eagle owl, it's some that are huge, but not all within the species. Does that make sense? <laughs> yes, okay. I think so. Um, I saw a question that I thought was interesting. Um, uh, so this is about the structure of the feathers. Somebody asked, uh, Amanda Price asks, which feathers have an artery or vein in them, if at all? Okay. Mm -hmm. I have something to show you. Good. When they're growing. Okay, hang on. We're going to put you on the big screen again. Uh, there we go. Okay, there we go. Now. Okay, so when they're growing, all feathers have blood supply. That's how they grow. So this is a feather that was broken off while it was growing. Uh, let me see if I can get this to focus on the end. Yes. Okay, I think you got it. You got it. Can you see that there is blood in that shaft? Yes, you can. You can. Yeah. So when a feather is growing, they say that it's in blood. So that means there's there's blood supply to this feather, and that's how it is able to grow. So all feathers have blood when they're growing. When they finish growing, then they pinch off, and there's no more blood in the shaft anymore. And then you don't have to worry about breaking feathers because when they break, when they're in blood, it's a it's a direct conduit to their blood supply. So they can could theoretically bleed to death from broken feathers when they're in blood. But once they've hardened off like this, then there's no longer a blood supply. But that applies to all feathers. And how long does it take until uh, that, that blood supply is stopped? Then? Uh, depends upon how big the feather is. Mm -hmm. So if you have a feather this big, mm -hmm. it's going to take months for that to grow. Right. I mean, this might take four months or, right. or more to grow completely. So generally birds, owls, are growing their feathers in spring through fall. So it's a it's you know at least half the year they're growing feathers in for the most part. Thank you. Okay. Do we have some more questions? Uh, Mark Horner, is there something? Uh, sorry, it's hard for me to read all these. Um, oh, Mark Horner asks, do owls rely more on sight or hearing for hunting? Hmm. That's great. <laughs> Good question, and it depends on the species. If you are a great gray owl, a boreal owl, or a barn owl, you're one of the species that can catch prey entirely by sound without ever seeing it. So a barn owl can localize prey just based on sound. A great gray can catch a vole under up to two feet of snow without ever having seen it. A boreal owl also can catch prey without having seen it. So they're prime, really good acoustic hunters. But something like a snowy owl is more of a visual hunter. So we know for sure, because um, a researcher tested it in Norway, a snowy owl can see a lemming moving 1.1 kilometers away. So just over 0.6 of a mile. Crazy. So that's very visual. Now, if you're a fish owl, you're not going to be focused on hearing. You're going to be focused on seeing those fish that you're hunting. And then there's everything in the middle. You know, some of them use, um, like, well, this is hilarious. Our eagle owl, I mean, they certainly use hearing. And she certainly has serrations on her feathers. But she just doesn't pay attention. I can walk up behind her, not even trying to sneak up on her. And then all of a sudden, she notices I'm there and she jumps. <laughs> That's amazing. On an owl. But you could never do that to our barn owl. You get anywhere near her and her favorite her favorite play is if you make sounds. You know, if you run your fingers on something. And if you do it where she can't see where your hand is, she's always looking exactly where your hand is, even if she can't see wow. it. Like if she's in her travel box, you do a sound on the outside, she's always Goodness pinpointing me. exactly what? where the sound is coming from. That's crazy. And if I try and do that with a great horned owl, like if I stand with my back against the wall and scratch the wall, they'll look at the floor first. Like that's where it should be coming from and then go, oh, wait a minute, where is that actually coming from? Wow. So it, it varies dramatically between species of owls. So some are more visual, some are more acoustic and some are, are in- You're talking about species, how many species of owls are there? 
Himo Mikala, when he came to our owl festival a few years ago, did a one hour presentation on how many species of owls there are in the world. So nobody agrees. It's not a done deal yet. If oh. anybody tells you exactly how many owl species there are, they don't know what they're talking about because nobody knows and everybody's arguing. So on the low end of the argument is probably around 220. Mm -hmm. High end is maybe 275, okay. something like that. So if you say something in the ballpark of 250, you're probably somewhere okay. around what it actually is. I want to ask some more questions. Um, Bev Webb is wondering if you have any elf owl feathers with you. Uh, I am trying so hard to get an elf owl specimen. One of the things we're trying to do at the Owl Center is to have a complete collection of mounted specimens of every owl that occurs in North America. So right now we have nine mounted specimens. I have five more species in the freezer. We're, we have a flammulated owl on its way that we should have by the end of the month. Um, it's in a freezer in Colorado right now. Um, but there's four that I still need to get. One is a hawk owl. I should be able to get that this winter, hopefully, because um, that's when they come south into Minnesota. And there's three that I'm having a really hard time getting. One is the spotted owl because they're endangered, of course. So it's very difficult to encounter one of those, um, especially as a dead specimen. Um, one is the whiskered screech owl, which only occurs in a little teeny weeny 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 pit part of the United States. And the other is the elf owl because apparently elf owls are just so small and just these little brown jobbies that nobody ever sees them when they get injured. Really? so nobody ever picks them up so i'm working on it but i don't have it yet it's a great question uh we had another question from uh brenda russum randolph uh and they're asking do owl feathers get oiled like in other birds mm. ah owls do have uropygial glands so that's the fancy word for the oil gland that's um where their tail where the tail attaches to the body, right on top here, they have this oil gland and they do squirt oil out of that onto their tongue and they smear it onto their feathers to help with waterproofing. So yes, you will see in print some places that say owls don't have that because they're not waterproof and that's not true. <laughs> I've taken oil glands off of many dead specimens. I've watched all of our live birds oil themselves. They squirt the oil on and smear it over their feathers. And if you squirt them, the water runs off just like a duck's right. back. They, and, you know, you get the under feathers soaked just like anything. Yeah. And then they're like a drowned rat and they have trouble flying. But just regular rain on their back comes off pretty nice. Mm, okay. Um, and I think this one's from Periscope from Mares Adotes. Have you ever counted the feathers on an owl species? And if so, how many were there? <laughs> Whoa. Well, should we delve into this one? We were going to save this for a quiz question at the end. Oh, wow. Oh. You're smart. Whoever it is. We've got really smart people in Periscope today. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll leave that for the quiz. Okay, we'll leave it okay, for the but quiz. But I can say that I have never counted, but I'm smart enough to know somebody who knows somebody who has <laughs> counted. So I have an answer. <laughs> wow. <laughs> do you have a question? Uh, do you... Okay, I need to read this out loud. I don't quite understand it. Donnie Magic Desk says, do you ever make the sounds of a cat walking on the owl's roof? <laughs> I, I'm guessing they're wondering if there's ever reactions from owls when they hear cat noises. Okay. Um, I don't know that it's the noises that bother them, but visually seeing them, our birds, our owls don't like to have cats around. They, it bothers them. So... I mean, I, I wouldn't do anything that would make them think that there's a cat around because they tend not to like it. Now, a wild great horned would probably be okay with eating a smaller cat. I mean, they do in the wild. Um, but our particular birds that we have are like, ah, it's a cat. <laughs> so I, I don't. It would, it would not be nice. Um, when I was researching for the show, I, I found some interesting facts about uh, like the, the common term light as a feather. So to people, like a feather seems pretty light, but maybe you could talk about how heavy feathers actually are for the birds that we're talking about. Um, well, I mean, they just kind of, <laughs> there's not much to them. They're very, very light. You know, if this was in your hand, I can't feel this. 
at all. I don't sense the weight. I don't even sense the touch. There's nothing to it. But when you put a large number of feathers on mm -hmm. a bird, what I've read, and I've never checked this, is that if you plucked all the feathers off a bird and then you took just the skeleton, the bones all dried mm -hmm. out, and you weighed the skeleton and you weighed the feathers, the feathers would weigh more than the skeleton. Wow. So I've never tried that. I think it would be interesting to do sometime, but um, I'm not in the mood to pluck an owl. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's cool. You have more questions though. Uh, Glenn, Glenn Hazelwoody asks, do owls build their own nests? Mm, good question. And the, the almost complete overall answer is no. They, they don't build nests generally. Um, so if you're a great horned owl, you take over a stick nest from a hawk or a crow or sometimes a bald eagle or a potted plant or on top of a building or um, a little cave, a little hole up in a cliff. They'll, they'll use almost anything. Um, burrowing owls in the western United States have to use a burrow that's already been made, but apparently the ones in the eastern United States if they have a starter hole, they'll finish digging it out. But that's only a really small subpopulation of burrowing owls. And then some people will say, well, short-eared owls build nests. But I've never seen them do it. But my understanding of everything I've seen about owls otherwise is everybody makes a nest scrape. So they get in where they want a nest, and they scrape with their feet. So that's not really building a nest, <laughs> uh, but some people will say, oh, they're lining it with grass. Well, I don't know that they actually bring grass to line it or are they actually just squishing it down and digging around. So for the most part, the answer is no, but okay. it's hard to say always and never when you're talking about animals. Uh, so we have a question from Proud Cat Mama of three, and we kind of talked about this a little bit already. So. Uh, maybe we'll just re-answer the question. So she's asking, Carla, in order for owls to turn their head 270 degrees, how many vertebrae do they have? Ooh, I bet some people know the answer to that one. <laughs> <laughs> Humans have seven cervical vertebrae. Giraffes have seven cervical vertebrae. Um, owls, and I think most birds, have 14. Wow. So that helps. Wow. What you don't see, I mean, it doesn't look like they have a neck, but they have a really long neck. I mean, think of E.T. His head is down here most of the time, but he can like stretch his head way up. That's kind of like what an owl is like. Their, their neck is normally bent into an S shape when it's down low. But if you ever see an owl, which you rarely will see this, if an owl, like if I wanted to look over my laptop and I was an owl and I was standing here, I could stretch my neck way up. I would straighten my knees out because as they stand, their knees are always bent, but they can straighten them out to get taller and stretch their neck way up. It looks really funny when they do it, but they can. So they do have very long necks. And then also to help them turn their heads, the vertebrae don't have projections like our do, ours do, so they can swivel farther. And then they have larger holes in the sides of the vertebrae for the um, blood vessels to go through. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So that they don't strangle themselves when they when they turn their head so far. Any more questions? Uh, yeah, I, I missed a few here on the on our list. Um, uh, they were asking. Uh, there's a few questions asking about owls harassing eagles and trees. Uh, we sure had that one last year. <laughs> yeah, I remember that question. <laughs> That's a typical question for eagle lovers. <laughs> yeah, so owls are usually going to pester them over nests more typically than, than just in general. Um, yeah, so, and it could go either way between a great horned owl and a bald eagle. So a bald eagle is probably going to have the advantage during the day. But at night, a great horned owl is probably going to have the advantage. So, yeah, it's not as bad as the rivalry between great horned owls and crows. I mean, they're always uh, despising each other and screaming and hollering. So occasionally the owl-eagle thing happens, but not as often as owls and other birds. Uh, let's see. Oh, um, do some owls hunt during the daytime from Kelly Aquino Crosetto? Mm -hmm. Very good question, and yes, there are some owls that are strict daytime hunters. If you get into pygmy owls, if you go to the western, western North America where there's northern pygmy owls or ferruginous pygmy owls, 
if you want to see a northern pygmy owl, you go out during the day. You don't go out at night. They generally go to sleep at night, and they're hunting birds during the day. So there are owls that are strictly diurnal. There's some that are flexible, that are some that are more crepuscular, that are, there are some, so crepuscular is dawn and dusk active, and then certainly the nocturnal ones. But there are some that are diurnal, that are day active, yes. Uh, a question from I007. Why are owls generally active at night? Yeah, why? <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> Probably because nobody else is. So you just kind of <laughs> fit in where there's a hole. So why would you do it during the day if you can do it at night and avoid the competition of the hawks? I mean, it's generally how nature works. You kind of fill in and, you know, we have deer in North America. They have kangaroos doing the same thing in Australia. So... You, know, you have kind of have roles that get filled and yeah, yeah Car Carla, yeah. let's go through the beautiful picture of feathers here uh, that you have um, uh, submitted. So could you please talk about this one? Yep, yeah, this is an auricular feather from a we barn have owl. We have this. Um, so right around um, the edge of the facial disc, there are on owls that are really good acoustic hunters, really tightly packed auricular feathers like this. They're very stiff. Mm -hmm. um, and the ones that are really good at hearing, they're very curved. So what you can't see here is this is curved in an S shape, actually. Mm -hmm. um, so they're very curved, and that's focusing that sound. This is your little satellite dish. Um, could you skip down to that picture that shows a barn owl face um, that's been oh, no, plucked? Wait, sorry. Right down here, yes. Yeah. So this is, you know, sorry for the gruesomeness. This is a road <laughs> killed from the Netherlands. But, you know, I've always, you always hear about owls having this satellite dish face. And I've always thought, yeah, right. how does that work? I don't, I don't get the satellite dish. Where's the right, satellite dish? Right. Here's the satellite dish. Ah, yeah, we'll you pluck all those open feathers on the face away. And some oh. owls have ear flaps of skin. So you can see a barn owl has flaps of skin that has feathers attached to it to help move mm -hmm. uh, how that sound is bouncing into their ears. But these auricular feathers you can see are really curved and very densely packed. And that's what the sound is reflecting off of. That is the satellite dish that you're hearing about when you're talking about their face working like a satellite dish. Incredible. And you never get to see this. My husband um, is Dutch and he would pick up, he had permits to pick up road killed owls um, to look at their eyes and other things. And he did this, and this is amazing. I've never seen another picture like this that illustrates that satellite dish of a face. Um, so barn owls have dramatic ones. A lot of owls don't have significant facial dishes like this, uh, but barn owls really do. Mm -hmm. So you can see the edges of that then are the auricular feathers. What we're seeing, that whole thing is lined with auricular feathers. They're stiff, they right. hold their shape, and they bounce the sound. Incredible, incredible. Yeah, wow. totally amazing. To use your face as a, as a, as a receiver, that's amazing. Mm -hmm. Gee. Okay, then we have uh, another feather here. Yeah, so this is a, a down or a semi-down. It's kind of everything in the middle. So a down can be just that little tiny handle at the tip and then just foof beyond that. So these have the barbs, but the barbules are not hooking and zipping together. They're just fluff. Um, so when a female is going to incubate, she will lose a bunch of these feathers on her belly. So it's stuff like this that comes out, this downy stuff. Um, that leaves a bald skin patch so her skin can be in direct contact with those eggs when she incubates. But there's these little downy feathers all over their body underneath everything. And if you get to something like a snowy owl, um, all birds have apteria. So it's parts of their body that don't have feathers on them. Um, feathers grow in tracks. They don't grow all over the whole entire bird's body. And then they kind of um, cover the rest of the body. So typically there's an apteria right down the front of the body that has no feathers on it. But if you get a snowy owl, there's these little fuzzy feathers almost on the whole entire body. So it's going to help insulate, keep them warm, those kinds of things. Yeah, just for the clarification of, of, of the terminology you're using. So when you talk about 
barbs and so on. Could you just explain this picture a little bit, maybe because not everybody will be familiar with the terminology. Yep. So that central shaft mm -hmm. is called the rachis officially. Mm -hmm. That's what we call the shaft of the feather. And the bottom part of it is the calamus. Um, and then depending on the feather, you can have the downy barbs on the bottom or not. Um, this particular one doesn't really. And then if you've, most people have probably played with a feather and you can unzip it and zip it back together. So those horizontal things coming out are your barbs. Mm -hmm. And then they have little tiny barbules coming off the sides and those barbules can have hooks on them. And that's what lets you zip the vein of the feather together. So right. the, the wide part of the feather that we think of is the vein of the feather. And there's an inner vein and an outer vein. Um, but hopefully that makes sense. So not all of them have the hooks. The things that stay foofy don't right. have the hooks on the barbules. Okay. So this is all birds. That's basic feather anatomy for all birds. Okay, no, you've got an albino here. That's amazing. <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah. So in talking about pigment, um, an albinism is not as straightforward as you think it would it, it would be. Uh -huh. So this particular bird um, has no melanin. The melanin is what gives your browns and blacks and those kinds of colors. Um, there's different pigments that give yellow. So this is a, an albino barred owl. So I always have to enunciate, not barn, but barred owl. Um, but they have yellow bills and yellow on their feet. So it still has the yellow pigments, but there's no melanin. So it actually has pink eyes because they have brown eyes. Now the World Bird Sanctuary in St. Louis used to have a great horned owl that was an albino. And it was completely lacking all melanin but it had the yellow pigments, but great horned owls have yellow eyes. So its eyes were normally pigmented. Wow. So typically what they say, if, if a bird is lacking <laughs> pigment in their eyes, it affects their vision. Um, so this was a young one that came into a rehab center in Cedar Falls, Iowa. Um, it had nested in somebody's yard with three normally colored siblings. Um, everybody in the neighborhood watched out for them. And then the middle of the summer in July, they found this one on a street starving to death. Um, so then there was a lot of debate. Can this owl be released? Is it reasonable to release this owl? Does it have a reasonable chance of survival? And the weird thing is, and you can kind of see it in this picture, the mm -hmm. feather structure was not normal. It's really hard to describe it, but do you see how it's fuzzier? Yes, it looks normal? very fuzzy. That's right. That's right. Yeah, the, the contour mm -hmm. feathers that give shape Extreme. to the body, like the wing feathers and what you see on the back and the breast, they're normally, you know, they're not this fuzzy. Mm -hmm. Yes, owl feathers are fuzzy, but not like this. Its feather structure was not normal. Um, and then they expected pink eyes just don't function well. And then plus imagine being a barred owl, being active at night, being bright mm -hmm. white, and being a species that would be eaten by a great horned owl or other things. You're just asking to be eaten. So after a whole lot of debate, they finally decided not to release this owl. Wow. Um, and everybody and their brother was weighing in and everybody said, it's not gonna last that long. But there's very, very little incidence of albinism in owls. And then there's the exact opposite. There's melanism where you get almost completely black ones. Oh, wow. um, yeah, so both have been documented, but both are extremely rare in owls. So, um, but then you can get people arguing, saying this isn't a real albino because it has yellow pigment and whatever. It, it has no melanin in it. Okay. And it, it probably would not survive normally in the wild, but very uncommon in owls. Mm -hmm. hmm, that's interesting. Uh, yeah. We have a few more questions, uh, if you mind answering some more of them. Uh, Brenda asks, what age do owls mate? Oh, it depends on the species. So generally the smaller species are gonna be ready to go sooner than the bigger species. Um, so if you're a Eurasian eagle owl or a Blackstone's fish owl, um, you're probably gonna be a few years old. A great horned owl, which is the species I know best, is 
capable females have been documented breeding at one year of age. It's not normal. I don't think they've ever documented a male breeding at one year of age because the male has to be a really good provider. So maybe he's not a good enough hunter yet, um, but a female gets provided for nesting. But typically they're not gonna breed until two or three years. Our captive ones really haven't shown um, a lot of territoriality and sexual behavior until they're like three or four years old. They may do it sooner in the wild than in captivity. Um, but barn owls, barn owls, they get going really fast. Barn owls are the rabbits of the owl world. <laughs> so they're sexually mature at seven months of age. Wow. And seven. most seven months of age. And they um, can have, most owls will have one batch per year mm, or sweet. even every other year. Um, but barn owls, if everything is great, lots of food, great weather, they can have three batches of babies per year. And they're having in the U.S. five to seven young per, wow. per, per batch. So, th yeah, they're kind of the rabbits of the owl world. And obviously very high mortality. You can't have reproduction like that without really high mortality or they would have taken over the world. <laughs> so most barn owls aren't gonna live more than a year or two in the wild typically, but they're sexually mature at seven months of age. So Rebecca, let's take two more questions. And then what I suggest is we go to the quiz, which is really fun. And we'll do one question to Facebook, one question to YouTube and one to, to Periscope. Uh, and and so, so just choose two more questions and then um, you know, otherwise it gets too long also yeah. for Carla. Okay. So. Uh, so this one's pretty relative to feathers. Uh, they're asking if, uh, Kelly's asking if you can define what preening is. Mm -hmm. um, preening is basically getting their feathers in order again. So they're zipping um, the feather sh the veins together again where they've come apart. Um, their oiling is usually considered part of preening. But it's basically, you know, we comb and wash our hair. Kind of that's the equivalent. Uh, and then there's another question from Sherry, <laughs> Sherry M. Are owls social or solitary if they're not mated? Uh, uh, oh, if they're not mated. Um, most owls are not going to hang out with other owls, except long-eared owls definitely do. Um, and that's whether they're mated or not. But long-eared owls are not necessarily a species that has the same mate every year. They're kind of nomadic. So, hey, there's great food here, so I'm going to breed here this summer, and then I'm going to go off to a communal roost for the winter over here, and I'm going to hang out with maybe a dozen or two other long-eared owls. Or if you're in Serbia, this is where the biggest concentration of owls occurs, and tourists go there. So the city of Kinkinda in Serbia, wow. in their town square in the city, will have up to 700 long-eared owls what? together in one, basically one block. What? Yeah, so how's that for social? <laughs> but yeah, typically owls don't hang out like that, but long-eared owls in the, in the winter do. Huh. Not in the summer, but in the winter they do. Uh, all right, we're taking one more question here. I'm just picking randomly. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not sure if you know of this thing that's going on. Uh, Quincy McCabe says, I've been watching the tragedy unfold on the pot plant owl Facebook page. Three owls in that family have died from trichom trichomonas. Do owls in the USA get this disease? Oh, uh, they can. Well, and actually I know those owls very well. I got to meet them in person in November. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Well, I literally was there and got to see them and they're spotted eagle owls. Um, yeah, so so trick is really nasty there. It's it's um, worse in the cities, and we can get it in the United States, um, and it's from eating junk food. When you eat pigeons and doves, um, they carry this, and, and they can get sick, they can die, whatever. But birds that eat, owls that eat the infected ones will get this, and they get a plaque in their mouth um, that, that can kill them. If treated, the plaque can drop out, it'll leave an open spot and eventually can heal, but it does kill some of the birds. Um, we can get it in peregrine falcons in the cities because they eat a lot of pigeons. So it's typically from eating pigeons and doves that birds get this. So it can happen where we are. I don't think I've ever seen a bird with trick, um, but in other places, 
you know, we're in a rural area in other places, it's, it's going to show up more, but it's, it's really bad in Johannesburg where that's going on. And they see it every summer. This isn't an isolated incident. Talking to the rehabbers there, they said, yep, every summer when it's hot, all the birds are coming into the bird feeders and the bird baths. They're transmitting the disease to each other. And then if you're an owl catching those pigeons and doves that are easy to catch, they're getting infected also. So it's, it's not something special this year. It's something that happens there every year. And unfortunately, it has happened to um, a CAM family that's very well known and loved. So it's, it's kind of horrible to watch and see. Okay, very good. Well, Carla, what I suggest now is that we just, um, I mean, you, you've got so many interesting questions in your head. <laughs> so I, I would suggest we do one to Facebook, one to Periscope, one to YouTube, and we don't dial in because it just takes too long. So we'll just wait for the first person, you know, to get the correct answer and then we'll read it out and then we'll spin the wheel and then they can win something. How's that? Okay. So may, maybe let's start. Well, let's start with YouTube. Maybe let's see, because um, yeah, Carla, we, go ahead and throw throw a question at at, at the YouTube <laughs> people. Okay, right? YouTube wasn't the the person who asked about the number of feathers, right? Oh, was that goodness. Periscope? I think, I think that, was... that was YouTube. I think I said Periscope, but it uh, was actually okay. YouTube. Okay, that's okay. Okay, if it so... was on YouTube, let's do that one then. Okay. Okay. So the question is, how many feathers? Well, and I'll be very specific about it. There was a dead great horned owl found. She had eaten pigeons and she got a virus. This is a different one. She got a virus from eating pigeons out in Oregon. She had young in the nest. She died. And somebody plucked each and every oh, feather wow. off her body, categorized them and counted them. How many feathers were on that owl's body? And I'll give you four choices. Was it 2,384 feathers? <laughs> okay. That, that's A. B is 7,942 feathers. Wow. C is 10,212 feathers. Oh or D is 12,259. Wow, that's quite a spread, Carla. <laughs> so how many did she have? <laughs> Okay. Oh, gosh. I, I, you know, usually I'm good at numbers, but I didn't remember that. I remember something with 2,000. First with one is 2,000-ish. Next yeah. one is 7,900. Okay. Then 10,000-ish, then over 12,000. Okay, got it, right? Two th uh, okay, here we go. So the first one comes from Meadow. We're going to take a few few in. Uh, we don't say the answer yet. Meadow says twelve around 12,000. Amanda says 12,000. Okay, here we go. Uh, okay, Mark says 7,942 and um, again 12,000 and so on so a lot on the 12,000 side so we're just going to wait till we have all the numbers and then, then it will be a winner for sure <laughs> so just hang on 10,000 says Cherie um, Pacific for 12, yeah so look for 12,000 but we remember we can see who the first one was there okay okay C, what does C mean? Oh, D and C, oh, A, B, C, D. Okay, so the, the, yep. I understand with C, they mean 10,000, and with D, they mean 12,000. Is there anybody who's coming up for two and a half? I haven't seen. B, we have seen. Baffle 91 is the first one who said 7,000, if I see that correctly. Is that right? Yeah. <laughs> Are you paying attention? I'm going to guess A. I'm going with A. You're going with A. I'm going with 7,000-ish. Well, A is 2,000. A is not. Oh, 2, no, no. A is 2,000. Two that's B. That's B. B is 7,000. Is there anybody with A, uh, you know, with a 2,500? Then we have the whole spread, and then we can easily scroll back and find the winner. You know, it's very easy. Uh, nobody seems to say A. Well, that's great. So it's only B, C, or D, or there's no winner. That's the option here, right? Because I see no A's, and we're going to close this now. Okay, Carla, <laughs> what is the answer, please? There is a winner. The answer is D, 12,259. Okay, let's let's scroll right back to the first one who said 12,000. That would be it because it... So that's Meadow. Meadow, you have won. That's fantastic. Okay, so hold on, Meadow. Please um, uh, to give to Nicole or Jenny. Just give your 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 email or your contact or, or send a, uh, send an email. So uh, Meadow has won that. That's great. So that's the YouTube question solved. So let's go to Facebook. Let's go to our Facebook people. 
Facebook friends now we have to really pay attention okay now it's Facebook okay next question please Carla <laughs> um, how many tail feathers does an owl have okay no option on this one's no multiple choice <laughs> okay no multiple choice how many tail feathers does an owl have uh, this is to Facebook now okay we're gonna wait a little bit Let's see who, who comes up with the first correct answer. So far, there are no tail feathers. We'll see. <laughs> they do have tail feathers. <laughs> they do. Okay, it's bigger than one. Okay, that's the... Although they can molt them all at once, so they have none. But this is how many is the full complement. Okay, so it, it always takes a bit of... It's always a bit of delay. But again, how many tail... Okay, here we go. Here we go. We see some answers, finally. We have 32, 12, 20. And, and we have 32, 12. Now, the problem with Facebook is we have to remember who these people are. 12, I've seen a lot on 12. 32, yeah. Oh, my goodness. 7. The problem is we have to scroll back somehow on Facebook, which is a real pain. It's not so easy. And on Periscope, it's easy. On YouTube, it is. So we have 7, 12, 15, 22 is, is the spread I see for so far and then we have to do a very difficult job of scrolling back maybe nicole you can help with that uh, just to find out uh, you know um uh, let me ask you this carla is the is the correct answer so far in that spread okay well if it is correct if it if it is then so give us the correct answer please 12 yeah 12 so it's the same it's a uh, it's the same as an eagle so that's fine so it's 12. Yeah. okay so um uh, Nicole, if you could please be so kind or Jenny, just to scroll back on Facebook and find out who the w first person was to, to say 12. So congratulations. That's great. So now, now we are jumping to Periscope. We're jumping to Periscope. So question, Carl, for, for our Periscope people. Okay, this one might be hard or it might be easy. <laughs> well, that's... Uh, <laughs> what, what is the technical term for ear tufts? Those owls that have feathers up here? Wow, do you know? There's a technical term. I'll give you a hint. It starts with a P. Okay, do you want to repeat Let's that? Uh, what, what are the... What is what's the, the technical term for the ear tufts? Okay, the technical term... Starts with a P. For the ear tufts. So this is for the periscope people, really difficult. What is the technical term for the ear tufts? There's a t and it starts with a P. P for pilot or... Or P for Periscope. Oh, well, P for Periscope. That's it. Okay. So yeah. here you go. No more fooling. You come on Periscope, people. Is it a silent P? Nope. It's, it's not a silent oh, Okay. It's not a silent P. So we have guess auricular pinna. That's that's one. Projections. Projections. Go on. That's great. Come on. You're doing great. Come on. This is a difficult one. I don't know the answer. I can tell you. I don't know. So it's very It rhymes with a magical animal. It runs oh rhymes with it a magic rhymes with a magical unicorn. animal. Patch? <laughs> Patch. A unicorn. <laughs> unicorn. <laughs> okay, guys, come on. Pentar? <laughs> Maybe. So plums? far no plums. Nature scope is saying plums. So far, we don't have plumes. plumes sorry, there plumes. Yeah, you mean plumes. plumes. Well, this is it's... a difficult one. Yeah, somebody else said punicorn. Punicorn. <laughs> Paracorn. <laughs> Paracorn. Uh, We're getting close. Pinicorn. Pinicorn. Punicorn. Almost. almost, almost, guys. Come on, come on. You almost got it. Whoever's doing this is brilliant. Pragan, like dragon. <laughs> 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 That's a good one. Alice says Pragans. <laughs> oh, this is difficult. I, I mean, yeah, this is a hard one. L. L is the second letter. L is the second one. So here's your clue: P and yeah. L. This is a difficult one. I don't know what the others are saying on the other but we're going and to ignore them. We're only somebody listening. said the first part of the word. Someone said the first part of the word. So. Scroll back. You can do that on Periscope. Scroll back. Maybe it's plumicorn. Oh, did I just guess it? <laughs> Rebecca! 
<laughs> Plumicorn. Here's one. Plumicorn. Pegasus. Nobody heard me. It's okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but I think... Plu okay, Plumicorn? well, give the first one who says Plumicorn. Anyway, who's the first one? Is it Plumicorn? Plumicorn. Who's the first one? Yeah, that one. Take this one. Uh, it... Ride the Fence said Plumicorn. Plumicorn, is that correct? Yes, Plumicorn is okay, correct. Okay, so that's the winner then, okay? Nice. Okay, so Ride the Fence. Ride the Fence, well done. So please um, send... Um, Send an email. Just send it to. Um, well, 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 I know it's not so easy for a, a Periscope to get your contact, but uh, to zasafoto at gmail dot com or or there's another email I always forget. But just send us an email, and you'll you you'll get a beautiful picture as a prize, which we're going to choose now. Okay, so I'm going to quickly um, see what I can do here and get this wonderful wheel up. Just give me a second, please. Okay, whilst we do that, I'm going to show you something really beautiful, okay? So let's, um, uh, Carla, I just wanted to show them, I mean, how beautiful feathers are. So this is taken with a slow motion camera of mine. And you can just see, you know, you can just see, see the incredible, um, well, aerodynamics, really. So that was a falconer. And this is usually what you what you don't see very often, but I will show a lot more. But let's jump to this wheel of fortune if I can find it. Now I'm sure I can't because that's the way things go. Uh, where is my wheel of fortune? I don't know. You know what? Nicole arranged everything so nicely, and I just um, <laughs> I cannot find it now. Wait a second. Let me just jump in here quickly. Uh, there is there it says wheel okay very good thank you Nicole. okay you see I got brown hair again that's nice <laughs> very kind of you <laughs> so um, the, um, Carla we are spinning a wheel here okay I'm just gonna start again and this is the first winner who was on YouTube I think that was meadow if I remember correctly and you just have to say stop at some time stop okay oh this is a beautiful one that's number 43 for meadow and this was taken in Dutch Harbor, beautiful. Um, uh, that was a beautiful eagle along the shore of flying. So that's a beautiful picture. That's a first. So congratulations to Meadow. And now we will do the spin for Facebook. And it's that- Alan, Alan something. Thank you. Thank you. That was Alan. So let's spin the wheel. And this will be sent to you then. So you get a high res picture. Okay, Carla. Stop. Oh, how is it possible? <laughs> now, that's a probability that is incredible. So it's the same picture again, but it's a beautiful picture. You will really love it. It's the lighting is incredible. So that's the same picture again, number 43. And now what was our winner on Periscope? Uh, ride the fence. Okay, ride Periscope. the fence. Okay, ride the fence. Okay, and now Carla, please. Stop. <laughs> th okay, this is why you did it. <laughs> So that is, I think that's a five-year-old, if I remember correctly. I think so. 37, that's a beautiful picture, too. So congratulations to all our winners on that. And thank you so much, Carla, for, 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 um, for this beautiful uh, show. I'm just going to blend in your name again because it's been most incredible. Uh, that, that was so informative. Thank you to Nicole for arranging it. And what are you showing us there? One second, I'm just going to... There's some serious feathers. Snowy owl foot. Okay, okay, where are we? It looks like fur, but those are feathers. Okay, sorry, that's, I'm just going, oh no, sorry, that was not my intention. My intention was to blend us in, no, I can't do that. And the other extreme? Uh-huh. Barn owl feet. They just have little tiny bristles. Oh, wow. On. So you can tell who lives where it's cold and who lives where it's warmer. Wow, that's incredible, that's incredible. Then a uh, barred owl in the middle. Oops. Beautiful, beautiful. So there's every extreme of feathers on their toes. Well, and uh, Carla, we're going to put, I think um, uh, Nicole and Jenny may have already done that, put the link to, to the International Owl Center. Uh, how many visitors do you get a year? Um, this last year was about 10,000. Wow. Oh my awesome. goodness, 10,000 visitors. Oh my goodness. Yeah, and then a few more thousand for programs. 
Wow. And you only have about a thousand people that live in Houston, Minnesota. That's right. Yeah, a little less than a thousand. <laughs> that is crazy. And well, is you that... might get crazy for our International Festival of Owls in March. We do an international owl art contest for kids. And the deadline's January 15th, and we already have over 3,500 entries from 33 different countries. That's crazy. And, and how do you, uh, and who's, who's on the committee to decide which is the best? How do you even do that? I'm glad I'm not on the committee. <laughs> uh, we have three retired art professors that, that do the judging. Wow. You know, it would be nice if you could share the result with us. I'd just like to, you know, show that uh, to, to our audience. When, when is that going to happen? Um, the judging will be either the end of January or early February, and then we'll post the winners on our Facebook page. Okay, so I'm going to ask uh, Nicole or, or Jani or also Rebecca, please watch out for the Facebook page so we don't miss that. That's great. They're well, absolutely amazing. And that's international, right? Oh, yeah. We get very few. I think we have less than two dozen from the United States. Why? Really? <laughs> yeah. Most of them this year are from Russia, like 75% from Russia, like every art school in Russia entered. And the, and the, and the standard must be amazing, right? So mm -hmm. I can't yeah. even imagine that. I'd love to see that. Wow, that's, that's incredible. I'm, 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 I'm really impressed. I mean, we're really impressed with the work you do. It's been, been such a joy. I mean, we've had so many people there also on, on Periscope being very lively today and YouTube too and Facebook. It's really wonderful. Uh, to, to, uh, I want to say thank you to everyone for, for being on the show. And uh, thank you very much, Carla. And uh, we'll, we'll talk in a moment. I'll just say goodbye to everyone. Okay. Okay. Th thank you so much for being with us. Thank you. Thanks for having me on. Okay. So I'm just going to jump. And see, look, there's, the, there's the correct one. Let me just put the feathers in the background again, if I can ever find them. No, I'll leave the I'll leave the wheel of fortune, and I'll just get rid of us in the background there. I've got too many of us there. No, that's the wrong one. That's the wrong one. Okay, there we go. There we go. Let's put a beautiful picture because they were talking about art. Let's put some beautiful art. This was from uh, yeah from the ornithological uh, conference that was in July in Vancouver, which was so beautiful. It was incredible. So anyway, so I will say, uh, well, we will both say goodbye. <laughs> and thank you so much for joining. So I'm first going to say goodbye to our, our Periscope people. So if you just go there and just, yeah, press stop. Okay, thank you very much. So I have to do this very carefully. It's this sort of a, uh, almost like electrical engineering where you, where you can't just switch things off. Otherwise, you call it a short circuit. So I'm going to do this. Uh, so let's say goodbye to our Facebook friends. Now, thank you very much for being there. Okay. okay, that's that one and that one done. And now finally YouTube, and I better get this right because I have done this wrong and it's absolutely frustrating. Oh, thank you, by the way, for another donation here. We've got, uh, I wonder who that was. Oh, that is, oh, who is Ma it? Marizy Dotes. Yeah, Marizy Dotes. Thank, right thank, thank you so much uh, also give, for giving a donation. I hope I got everyone right. Th that's very kind of you. And uh, I'm trying to see if I can... See if there was anybody else. Um, oh, Proud Cat Mama of Three, we already mentioned, right? So thank you very much for your contributions. And uh, if I find the correct page now, yes, I think, no, it's wrong. It's a wrong page. Goodness me, it's always so complicated. Here we, we go. go. Okay, I found it. Goodbye. Okay, so <laughs> finally, good night from us. And thank you so much for, 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 for being with us. I just wanted to quickly say next week's going to be exciting. I nearly forgot it. I'll do a uh, special announcement on that. I'm going to be at the Southwest Florida Eagle Nest, and I'll also be uh, showing the lunar eclipse live, which is really exciting. I'll probably do a separate announcement on that. So thank you very much for being with us, and have a lovely weekend. Thank you.